guys, I, like I am so excited to have you guys here. <laughs> and uh, Dave and I have spent a lot of time together over our lifetimes, right? <laughs> yeah, you, you look uh, you look a lot better on radio than you do on TV. That's, I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. So yeah, no, I know. But pe people see me and say, if they see you on TV, it's interesting to me how people think. Um, well, you know, we see him on TV, so we know him, so we can say whatever we want. And they come up and say the meanest <laughs> things. <laughs> like, like, and then I tell them I'm colorblind, they feel bad, but did, did you wear that tie on purpose with that suit that you had on the other day? Or wow, you look a lot chunky. I've heard this one, chunkier. Mm -hmm. Chunky's bad, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, TV does add 15, 20 pounds. You, you look a lot know. chunkier than I thought you were. Like, oh, <laughs> that's, wow. That's not as bad as... Uh, going to church and having people tell him what he should have called. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh right. I, yeah. Yeah. I you you that know how that, shoulder. yeah. You, you've had to live that for a long, long time of everybody at church telling you. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the part. Why didn't you press? Why didn't you change the lineup going into the second half, right? Yep. So, well, well, this, this is a good day for us here um, to have you both in, in studio with us. Um, Coach Dave Rose, this is his son, Garrett. Uh, and, uh, you know, I say today is a good day because you guys are, have launched this motivational, um, I don't know what you call it, it's a presentation, but you're out and about with, with this, this whole program, um, uh, and, and it's designed to empower people to make each day a good day. So it's a good day that we've got you guys, <laughs> that we've got you guys here in you studio. Know, I, I don't know how good the day is when we actually show up, but uh, we, have, uh, uh, we, have, we have done the, our presentation quite a few times here in the last few months, and my, my claim to fame with this is that we, uh, we went to a high school um, and talked to the team, and won, they won the state championship. So uh, that makes me really, uh, really nice. excited. Nice. You know, that, uh, you, you, so you, you talked to them the day before? Uh, about a couple weeks before. A couple weeks before. And, okay. and then they, and then, and then they went they on a on tear. Won the, and won the state championship. Uh, oh, you got you to gotta take... I would take like oh, he's, he absolutely like ninety five percent credit. For credit we, for that. Remember, we I, always used to say to you when we would come to the game and you would come and shoot around and you'd go, "Oh my gosh, Dave and Blaine!" Like, like, and you were teasing <laughs> us, but 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 then we would go, "Dave, do we need to remind you of what your record is on BYU TV?" <laughs> and then right. you go, "That's right, it's that's okay. Right. I'll that's talk right. to you guys." We took all credit for all the wins <laughs> that's uh, over the years. I, I want to get a little bit more into the, today is a good day program. The specifics of but before we do that, we were just talking about this this Duquesne loss. I, I want your thoughts. On the on that opening round, and it's an upset. Duquesne was 11 seed. You know, BYU was the higher seed. Let's start with you, Dave and Garrett. I want your your opinion as well on this. Well, I, I feel <clears throat> I just feel terrible for the guys because uh, I watched the team all year long, and they um, they came together so well as a group, and I think surprised a lot of people. I don't think they surprised themselves. I think they, um, you know, they, they they expected that they'd come in and at least win as many as. You know they got got beat, and most people expected that they'd lose way more than they'd win. And uh, I, um, I I had a, a a lot of people ask me what I thought. You know before the season started, and I think you know my my very um, initial um, response was, hey, I think people will be surprised. This this team is they were put together, and then they all returned, and there's something really special about that. And you, you don't really know what it is, but when they all decide, especially in today's world, when they all decide to come back, uh, you've got an advantage. And they really did, and they had a great year. You know, you know I, I, was, I was talking to my mom because um, she called me upset. Like, she was like, yeah. Upset. Upset, upset. <laughs> and I said, you know, Mom, I, I'm not a, I'm not an expert in basketball, but it's safe to say that it's just hard to win an NCAA tournament game, right? Like everybody is there for a reason. Um, and I feel like you're not going to be playing any bums. So she goes, oh, okay. Well, that makes me feel good that the competition level, you know, has, has risen. Then she starts texting me. All the, ga all the games with the blowouts. <laughs> She's like, what about this? What about this game? What about this game? What about this game? So, so, you know, my question to you is, you know, regardless of where you're seated, how hard is it to actually, you know, you know, go into the tournament and, and win a game? Well, it's probably as hard as anything that you'll do as far as being a coach or a player in the, in the, the you know, in that situation. But I, I will tell you this, that the, when you, when you do finally break through and you do win a game, it's probably, it's, it's as, as good a feeling as I've had as a, as a, an athlete, a competitor, um, you know, a coach. 
And uh, this team is it, it's on its way. I mean, they, they got a lot of guys coming back. Um, you know, we were really fortunate. We played three games in the NCAA tournament until we got our first win, the fourth fourth uh, time in was when we when we got our win. And when we got that win, um, we beat Florida, I think, in overtime. Yeah. And then we played Kansas State, got off to a great great uh, um, start in that game, and then ended up getting beat. Uh, but that we got all the guys back, and we come back the next year and. That was when we made, you know, we made a run to the Sweet 16, got beat in the Sweet 16 in overtime to this basically the same Florida team we'd beat the year before. That was pretty. But, but good. that Florida team went to the Final Four that year, yeah, did they not? They, yeah. They, so they, well, I think they, you know, I think we would have played Butler. You know, oh. Pitt, Pitt, Pittsburgh was number one, and if I think I think Florida and Butler played. Oh, and okay, Butler and then Butler went on to that. Yeah. Okay. So and you've done and you've done the NCAA tournament thing as a player where you went all the way to the championship game. What's that like? And how hard is that? Even when you're loaded with Hall of Famers, you know, everyone remembers, you know, us beating Louisville in in the in the Final Four and what what a great game that was and all the dunks and everything. But they don't they don't remember the the first game against. Uh, Maryland, well, we go in at halftime down about six or seven, and Lefty Giselle's pumping that left fist to the crowd. And you know, we were playing in, in Houston in that game. But uh, that was a uh, um, I mean, uh, as hard as any game that we had to play all year long and get through. And we won the game and then had a chance to get to the Final Four. It, it, it is – the NCAA tournament is it, – it, every, every coach will tell you how special it is but uh, the way it really feels when you get there is indescribable. You can only experience it. And once you experience it, then it's like you're in a club that everybody knows mm. that's what happened. And, you know, when you look at a team like, like Utah State, as great as the season they've had this year, and they won that first game and they go into that second game, and there's even people picking them to win. You know, they're playing Purdue, and then wham, it all goes wrong. And... I've been there too, and that's that's, yeah. that, that's, a, that's a hard it's hard to explain that, but it's a, it's a very very unique experience, but it's as special as anything when you win that thing. Yeah, yeah. that that, make, that makes that it. makes you know, a lot it, of sense. You know, it's it's kind of like when when I I was on the team that upset uh, Oklahoma, and I tell people this all the time. I'm like, it's it's hard to explain the actual feeling. You know, you kind of have to be there, and even the fans though, the fans that were there. That was me. I was there. You were there? Yeah. I was there. I was on the sidelines. Maybe one of the coolest things ever. I mean, See? that that, that uh, stadium was brand new, I mm -hmm. think. It was yeah. like the first one in. Yeah, first, first official game, yeah. It, unbelievable. I, I have yeah. to say when I stood, and I've done this at, at college basketball games before that BYU has won, I was standing down in the corner, and Oklahoma came out, and their offensive line walked past me. And I went up and down each guy and went, we have no chance. <laughs> like, we have no chance in this game. We do not look like these dudes. But but a team that played together yeah. and was ferocious on defense yeah. um, and, and fearless on offense, they took down I'm Hey, I think even you guys on the team would admit that was a more athletic team. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But but the more athletic team doesn't always win. I, I think they ended up having like five or six first-rounders, not, not that year, but overall, you know, yeah. from, from that entire class, from their freshman to, oh, yeah, you that know, was, their, their, their senior year. You have to be there to experience yeah, it, either yeah, as a fan yeah. or in – Garrett, I want to turn to you, and, and I want to do come back to now to the today is a good day. Take us through the brainstorm that got you to this, and how did you come up with that theme, that name for a theme? Well, the, the big thing for us was that we really wanted to get a, a chance for people to, to experience kind of the things that we've been through together. We realized collectively between some of the things that I've gone through in my life and obviously with uh, my dad's health uh, challenges, uh, we've been through a lot. And we, we really, you know, we talk about it a lot and we just realized that there was a message out there for people to to just understand that when things are going bad, that you can still find goodness and happiness in life. And so today is a good day. It actually, that came from uh, an interview that my mom and dad were doing for, I think, the Deseret News, uh, right after you had come back from your initial diagnosis of pancreatic cancer. And during that interview, um, my mom had put, today is a good day. And they wrote that in the article, just a small little tiny piece in this long, big article. And then there was the, the game, the, the 
coaches versus cancer game where you guys were in all pinks and one of the fans in a myriad because it was jimmer and it was hype and everybody was there and there were signs and everything else but there was a fan that had had brought out a sign that said today is a good day mm-hmm. and had they had they had found it just so out. happened to be a cancer patient yes who was recovering from cancer Last time I had seen him, he was bald, and he, he actually, his hair. actually had yeah. his hair back. And so uh, that was really pretty uh, unique situation just in that, that, that experience. Yeah. And, and what – take us through this. So you, you start talking about this and what you've been through and feeling like, hey, there's a message here that we can share with people. Then, then what made you decide – Let's put something formal together and take this thing out on the road. Like, well, let you- me let me answer that first. Okay. I think it was my wife wanted to get me out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> okay? She, she'd had enough. And I don't blame her. I mean, it's uh, been... I'm not going to say that's true, but we've had that conversation. <laughs> it's been a pretty pretty serious... And I know her well, and I would say that. That does not surprise me. Okay. <laughs> and and uh, I, I mean, if, if, you can, if you can imagine this, we wait our entire career, okay, all, all 35 whatever years I coached, to retire, and then we take a great trip to Italy for a month, and we think that's going to be our life, you know, for the rest of our lives. And then I have a heart attack two mm-hmm. nights later when I get home. And right after that heart attack, then we have COVID, and then we have, I end up having a stroke, and, you know, it, and I can't have my normal, regular cancer treatments uh, for two years, a year and a half, two years. And then when I go back in to have my cancer checkups. Uh, I need to have the surgery. Cancers, we come back. They removed one of my um, kidneys, and that was a, as tough a surgery as I've been through. That was a year and a half to re- almost re- to recover from that. Wow. And so you add up you add up the time that we've had. We've we've basically my wife has taken care of me for uh, the. F- four years, four and a half years of us being retired. I guess this month is, will be five years. And uh, so I think she's just decided, hey, maybe it's time for Dave to go do something. <laughs> yeah. And so the, Garrett made this up, and we've had so, some fun so, with it. So were you the, were you the driving force? So she wants him out of the house, and he realizes, <laughs> and, and, and I'm not saying, like, you're here in person. I don't know what people can see. You look really good yeah. right Thank now. You. Are you yeah. feeling as good Thank as you, you look, I hope? Uh, at times, I feel really good. You look, you <laughs> yeah. look really good. You look, you look really fantastic, good. Yeah. as yeah. good as I've seen you in a number of years, well, and I'm, I'm, I'm so happy for that. Thanks. Um, so I'm going to ask you this. Like, I know your dad well. Like, we've known each other for a long, long time. He's a very private person. Yeah. He and I would talk in private, and he would, you know, on private moments, just one-on-one before games and things, and we would share things. And I just know he's a private person. He really is. To convince him to share this story. How did you do this? How did you get him to go out of the house and, and agree to go out and do this? It, it took a lot because that is something that is a, a big part of our family is we've gone through a lot of things privately. And, you know, there were times where um, he's going through his health concerns and we're over here trying to worry about if the nurses and the doctors are going to tell people that Dave Rose is in the recovery room or in the emergency room. And Later, we find out on the recruiting trail that there's coaches that are out there having their messages with players saying, you're not going to go play for BYU. Coach is going to die. You can't, you can't go wow. play for yeah. BYU. That's crazy. So we were trying to keep everything that we were kind of going through as a family private. And, and his coach, man, that's recruiting. That's what I call dirty recruiting. That is, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, not that's okay. Bad. That's bad. That was yeah. probably... Do you guys want to name any names on this show? Guys? No, okay. Yeah. That's that's crazy. But if you, if you would like to name some names, yes, um, uh, just you know, we can put them on the <laughs> yeah. table, and then hey, I will just pronounce just them. so you know, that's not the worst thing that that happened. That's, that's my goodness. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, my gosh. My the stories, goodness. the stories, <laughs> the stories that he has told about the recruiting trail and what it was like back in the day. Now it's all it's, it's easy. It's yeah, just, right. You throw money at kids legally, technically, right. with nil. But I mean, he would come back and tell me these stories, and it was unbelievable. People don't ever, I don't think people will ever realize how hard it was for him to recruit players yeah. when they had chances to go all over with all kinds of money going to them or their yeah. AAU coaches or their. Oh, you their, mean, you mean when family. NIL was behind the scenes and BYU right. couldn't do it before NIL was real? Exactly. Hey, before it was it's, legal. It's yeah. still tough. I mean, I, I, that, that, this does not make it any easier to sign players. It may probably right. makes it tougher. I, I think that, uh, you know, and now we've got. I think we've got one more year with that extra year of player. You know, we've yeah. got that fifth-year guy that's still around for – I think once that 
that we get past that. I think once that kids understand this a little bit more and they feel it, that this is going to be a little bit easier and it's going to feel more normal. I think right now it still feels, you know, hey, let, let's give what we can. And guys are running from year to year, from place to place. I think it'll settle down. And I think it's really good for the players. I mean, mm-hmm. you think about these players and what they put in their whole lives to, to get to that spot. And then who's making all the money? I mean, somebody else was making all the money. And right. the fact that the, the players get a chance for that, I, I think it's, what, it's, a, it's a great thing. But it, it is way different. Yeah, Way different. Yeah. yeah. Hey, former BYU basketball coach and Hall of Famer, Dave Rose, uh, his son Garrett are on the Wise Guys with us tonight, live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, wiseguys.com, all over the world. We, we have folks that join us every week from the Philippines and from um, Panama. And, like, it's crazy. crazy. BYU yeah. Cougar Nation is around the world. Yeah. And we, we it's evidence every week when we do this show. Garrett, you... You've had some some issues yourself that you've had to bow through, and and while while your dads have been a little more, even though we, you've tried to keep it private, he's he's been an all purpose public figure, so it's yeah. out there, right? But yours haven't been out there. Um, take us through some of the things that you've been through and how that um, has helped you put this thing together, and and how you were out telling your story. You can both jump in on that. Yeah, my my story starts kind of in high school. I was an offensive lineman. Speaking of those offensive linemen from mm-hmm. Oklahoma, I was a 310-pound left tackle. I, I remember a, when he was that big, too. 310. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I had an 850-pound deadlift and a 725 squat and a 4940 as a, as a senior in high school. That's crazy. Um, and so I was getting recruited. I had offers to play Utah, BYU, Oregon, Washington, Stanford, Navy. And um, I'd had some surgery on both of my shoulders to just fix some tendons that were kind of loose. And I ended up playing my senior year through just excruciating pain on my right shoulder. And it wasn't healing correctly, and I couldn't get the rehab done right. Um, and just uh, mind-numbing pain. And so finally the season ends, and I go to the doctor, and I say, something's wrong, we got to fix it. And it turns out that I ended up having a staph infection from mm. the previous surgery. Gosh. So I had gone about four and a half months with this staph infection. And by the time they found it, it had completely deteriorated my shoulder. The this, bones. Is, this was in season. You, you had the infection. Yeah. So I played through, I thought, you know, and, and just kept playing and playing and playing. And so I gave um, him really good advice. As a father, they just suck it up and play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You and all my coaches. Hey, life is rough. Put a helmet on. Let's yeah, go. That's yeah. True. yeah, no, yeah. I don't. Yeah, you, you and all my coaches and everybody else, because we just thought, hey, it's, it's, it's fixed. You had surgery. You'll be fine. Just keep playing, keep right. playing, keep playing. Um, but the, the challenge with that is that ended up leading to a shoulder replacement surgery when I was 17 years old. Mm-hmm. And I had to call these coaches one by one and tell them I wasn't going to be able to do my recruiting trips. Uh, football was over for me. Uh, and that was that was devastating at the time, you know, and uh, ultimately you can look back now and life is great when you can look back. Sometimes life is really, really hard when yeah. you're in the moment. Yeah. But when you get a chance to look back, you can see the good that that transition was for me, because had I kept going that way, it, it wasn't probably going the right path. But instead, it led me to a path of having a, a career in the nonprofit world and, and working with different nonprofits to make a difference. But. Uh, even through that, uh, there's there's definitely been a lot of challenges, um, especially with, uh, you know, you, 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 I had the surgery and then I've had multiple surgeries kind of coming up to that. And it was back in a time when doctors were just like, hey, here's surgery, here's, here's some pills, here's some pills, prescriptions, mm-hmm. here you go. Uh, it's good for you, it's fine, it's, it's going to take away your pain, you're going to be good. And, and so I actually had developed a dependency uh, to these prescription pills and uh, it was years years and years where I hid this from everybody, my family, my, my, mom, my spouse, my parents. Uh, nobody knew I just was rolling through life just pretending like things were good. Right. And ultimately, it came to a stopping point where I realized this was a major, major problem and I needed to do something with my life. Um, and uh, through, you know, of course, angels in, in our world, mm-hmm. my wife, she, she caught me one day when I just said, this was, this was it, this was, this was kind of my last day. And she stopped me that morning and she just said, are you okay? And she'd asked me that a thousand times. Mm-hmm. And she asked me on the, the day that I needed it. And I just said, no, I'm not. And I finally just opened up and kind of shared what was going on. And uh, we both decided at that point to, to kind of get some help and seek treatment. And so um, went in and went to a treatment center and got some answers, got some wisdom. And that's been over five years. So I've had five years of sobriety nice. since then. Congratulations. Thank oh, you. Yeah. What a story. Amazing. Yeah. Not easy. Yeah, so, right. so you, you, we've, you've both been through it. 
and and uh, not many people have to go through what you guys have been through, but everybody has something they're going through, right? Yeah. And uh, and and you guys have put this together to help those people. So how does it work, and where are you taking it, and and what? What's the response been like from people as you've in the early early part of this? Well, I'm going to tell you we've we've given quite a few speeches, and I I still have issues with my stroke, and so sometimes I say say things that uh, maybe in my mind is exactly how it happened, but it really didn't happen that way. But <laughs> it uh, makes it so entertaining. <laughs> yes, <it's> like, <laughs> but I do know that uh, we uh, we gave a little presentation a few weeks ago to a high school basketball team right. and that high school basketball team after our presentation um they'd been to the state championship game two or three times and had been beat all three times and this coach wanted something and there was somebody to say something to these guys to uh get over the hump and anyways they ended up winning the state championship so i got that going for me yeah, yeah. Cool. Is that, yeah. let's see was that that wasn't who just beat that was that was Enterprise High. Oh, so Enterprise. Enterprise. Yeah. So yeah. You tell me. I mean, I, you talk about these young men. We walked into that room. Greatest kids. My oh, every man. every one of these. They walked into that room and walked right up to us, looked us right in the eye, shook our hands, and introduced themselves, said their name, and then they all sat down. And for this presentation, they they were locked in. Their eyes were just uh, just glued. And I had talked with their coach previously. He called me and he just said, "Look." We need something to get past that hump, like my dad was saying. And we, we've got to um, – there's something. We've got to find something. Will you just come and talk to him? Yeah. So we'll take the credit because he was asking for us to give him <laughs> the something. But, no, in that message, one of the things that we did is we, we talked about the idea that every single one of you is going through something. And we do a little project when it's smaller groups um, where they can kind of identify those things. But – you know, I talk about this all the time. If we walked around and we had a bubble that was above us that said the things that we're going through, and it also said the things that we're really good at, I mean, we would be so much closer as a, as a society. Oh, yeah. Because we would be walking around going, uh, you too? Right. Me? Oh, my gosh. I didn't realize that. And, and so that was kind of part of our message that we've been sharing mm -hmm. with the people is, you know, it's okay not to be okay. Because if you can make today a good day, that you're going to get through. Right. You don't have to worry about tomorrow. This is my dad taught me when, when I was going through some really hard things. You don't have to worry about next week. You don't have to worry about tomorrow. Just worry about today. And if that's what it takes to get through today, then work, focus on that, and then you can worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. That, that, to me, the very best part of that is the team itself. They had six seniors on their team, and I think that they'd been through so much together that was bad that they would just – wanted anything to happen so that they could go through something really good and winning a state championship at enterprise high school is something that's happened a lot you know uh, at least quite a few times in the last you know decade or so and they wanted to have that and uh, I, was, I was just really excited to spend the time that we spent with them because they were all just so locked in please you know this is what we want and and, and it was it, a good time it, it was a good time we did yeah. Yeah. Is, is, is this directed um just for like athletes and sports teams or anybody? We, we've kind of got a universal apply here because we really, it's it's up to kind of the people who want it. So we've done keynote speeches with, uh, with companies and big presentations with thousands of people and we've done it with a high school in, in their classroom. So um, for us, it's the opportunity to get out and share. For me, selfishly, it gives me time to spend with my dad, which right. we didn't have a whole lot of that time during his career. He, you right, know, yeah, he's a busy, yeah. busy guy, and most of our time was spent together on the road and traveling and, and, you know, going to the games. But now we get to do this together, and so I love it, selfishly, because it gives us that time together. But really, it's an opportunity for anybody that just wants to have a message for us to come out and share it with them. Hey, I, um, I, I love it because my wife wants me out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but we, we love – one of the fun things about this show is people on the chat from around the world can can chime in. There's a couple of really nice comments on here. Dr. Ketch says, hey, so cool, Garrett. Thanks for being transparent and sharing your story. It's helpful for many, I'm sure, which, which absolutely. And then Linda Murray says, grateful Garrett got help when he needed it, and his wife was there for him. Dave and Cheryl have been inspirational to us. I've met them several times and think the world of what they have done together. That's really, really cool. Um, and then uh, another one, BYU Sports Addict says, I've got re great respect for Coach Rose. So glad to see him on the show. Can you ask him 
Is there one event or moment that stands out in your mind above all others in your coaching career at BYU? Wow. It you know. probably goes back to Dixie when you were in the middle of coaching and I asked you for money for a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> I used to sit behind the bench, but uh, we had to put a nix on that after, <laughs> after he was back. I was hungry. Money in the middle of the game. I was That's hungry. Was yeah, was there, is there a seminal moment at BYU that you, that you I mean, remember? I mean, I had, we had so many, so many great moments. And, and Cheryl, I, at this time of year, especially in the NCAA tournament, we get we get a chance to talk about you know things that were really special for us and. You know, I, I think that the greatest thing for me was just um, the day that um, I – well, this is going to be hard to, hard, hard to talk about, but it was, it was when I came back from Vegas and I was diagnosed with, uh, with cancer. I was in, uh, the, up at Huntsman for a week, and then I got to come home. And the first thing I wanted to do was come and visit with our team and kind of tell them what – I thought that everything was going to be okay, even though I didn't really know what what it was what was going to happen. But that uh, that time with the team was as good as any time I've ever spent with any team. And we went on from that. We just been beat by uh, in the in the in the NCAA tournament, and we had an un unbelievable hour. Or so I mean, it was the first time I actually let my wife speak to the team, but. Uh, that group went on and we won the first game in the NCAA tournament. And then the next year, that group won two games in the NCAA tournament. And so that's kind of like the I, I still, you know, think that uh, we we got a lot of we got a lot of help and uh, I, I received um, a lot of a lot of things that uh, will stay with me forever. That's for sure. That's a, that's a neat thing to yeah. share because um, I think most people go, oh, he's going to say the march through the NCAA tournament and Jim Romania in 2011, but all of that started. That was with really a, fun. Yeah, yeah, that was fun too, right? <laughs> and that was really fun. And, right? and beating Gonzaga when I had the newspaper 30 and 0, you know? And, yes. And, oh. and yeah. they hadn't yeah. played the game yet. Right. There, right? There's some amazing And then moments. we let him get ahead 18 to 2. Okay, and we called timeout. <laughs> so we got him right where we want him. You know, we had a lot of good stuff. Man, you, you had on the floor, I mean, you had a couple of Gonzaga games. Yeah. That mm -hmm. were really really fun, and, Three that, in a row. and, that, and that run with yeah. that run with Jimmer, right? Mm -hmm. That was really really fun, but but it's fun that you picked out a moment with the team as your number one. That that group of guys, are, I mean, they're, it, they'll be you know they'll be really special for us forever. Mm -hmm. And I'll I mean I'll look at it from my perspective. Um, I've had a behind the scenes um, kind of access to everything you can want when it comes yeah. to basketball and. You talk about winning and losing in that tournament. I don't think people truly understand how hard it is to win in that tournament. And I think what happens, and sometimes we as BYU fans, we get a little blue goggled, and we we have our expectations really, really high. Yep. And we're, our measurement of success is whether or not we win in that tournament. And I think sometimes we've got to look at it and say, what is the true measurement of success? Because in basketball, if your true measurement of success is finishing on a win, there's only one team that gets to do that. Right. This isn't football where you got bowl games and right. half those teams win. You have one team that can consider themselves successful, but if you take back everything that it takes to get to the tournament, that, that truly is one of the hardest things to do is just get there, right. right? It's a small group that actually make it. And so as I've been behind the scenes and I've seen – the hours and the days and I mean how many how many days in a row where he would go to bed at two or three in the morning because he was trying to take what they had just got from a loss and turn it into the next game and then turn around and game plan for the next and anyway I I just think uh I, I hope that we as fans can see the success that BYU basketball had this year and not look at it like oh my gosh it's another trip to the tournament where we didn't win a final four well yeah. no, only four teams get to do that Right. You know, I, I also think that you, you've got to you've got to really remember how difficult the game is. What, no matter where you're seated, no matter where they send you, you're playing a team that's just gone the same through the same thing you have. Six months of just torture every every two or three days playing a game, and they've won most of their games. They're right. not used to losing. It's not like playing uh, the named school in December in a tournament in Puerto Rico or somewhere. Mm -hmm. You're playing a team who's been through the six months 
and their record is probably pretty close to what your record is. And they probably, if you've won 25 games, they've probably won close to 25 games. And so they're not used to losing either. So you're playing a team who has spent the entire last year winning games. And to knock them off, it takes a, a real effort and takes them a little bit of experience, takes a, um, a lot of it, – it, it just takes a, a lot more than people think. Yeah, I think people discount this Duquesne game a little bit because they go, well, they didn't even win their league. Well, guess what? They got hot at the end of the year and won a bunch of games and won four games in their tournament and won mm-hmm. their conference tournament. Those are those are the hardest. Those guys. are tough, right? Because they're look, hot. Look at North Carolina State. I mean, their answers are still playing, and uh, they had lost four in a row going into their tournament too. They right. won five, five straight games, and then they won two in the tournament, so they won seven in a row. It's a good time if you're going to win seven in a row. It's much better to win the seven in a row in March than yeah, it is in the, uh, yeah in December November, yeah, yeah. November. Yeah. So you well, you can quote me on that every year, okay? <laughs> like, if you're going to win seven in a row, it's a lot better. <laughs> hey, hey, BYU's beaten three NCAA Sweet Sixteen teams. That yep. they they have wins over Iowa State and North yeah. Carolina State. That yeah. ended up being a much better win than anybody thought. And then that and, was a tough game. I, we were there in Vegas, watched that game, and uh, North Carolina State was was really good in the first half, but. BYU played as good a half as maybe they played all year in the second half in that game to get that one. That was a yeah. Big and then one. Dutch has his guys. I know Dutch is a good friend of yours. That, yeah. that down at San Diego State, they're playing really well down the stretch again. I feel it feels like to me with San Diego State every year, they're so good defensively they can just go hack a game out even when they're not shooting yeah. in the NCAA tournament. There's something to be said for that in tournament play. And, huh? and, and Dutch had an unbelievable run last year. And this year, you know, he got a little bit lucky the second round. He got, yeah. he got to play a 13 seed, I think. But And Yale, obviously, a great team. But, um, you know, you, you I, mean, I think if you would ask anybody, any coach, 365 of them, and they said, "Could you, do you want to play Auburn or do you want to play Yale? I think right. most of them would tell you. <laughs> Yeah. I'll take you. I'll take you. Yeah, I'll take you yeah, yeah for, sure. for sure. So they got a break. Absolutely. They got a break. Uh, yeah. They hey. don't get a break now, though. They go play no. Connecticut. Yeah, right? they don't get a break <laughs> at all. And now, now the, yeah, now the buck stops here. So Dave and Garrett Rose on the Wise Guys tonight with us. Uh, um, by the way, this stat blows me away. 348 wins at BYU. I, it, that's unbelievable to me. Uh, eight NCAA tournament verse. Um, and the head co- coach through Jim Romania. Uh-huh. Right. We just talked about Jim a little bit. Um we were talking about this before about Jimmer Mania come back right yeah. by this summer. Um, what do you, what do you think? Is the world ready for Jimmer Mania again in the Olympics with this three on three thing? Well, wait before we get to that, can you imagine Jimmer Mania in NIL? Oh, oh no, millions yeah. of dollars yeah. in merchandising, right? Can you imagine? Oh my goodness! I, I hate I hate to even bring that up because Jimmer and Whitney are probably thinking right. They spend spend a lot of time wondering if. They were maybe he's, born he's, about 10 he's, years He's been on a, bunch, a couple of times, and I, I said, what do you think you could have made in an aisle? He goes, Blaine, I don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even want to talk how, about how much, that. How much do you think he – like, so you look at some guys, like like Deion Sanders' son, um, Shador, he, I think he makes like four point something. Jimmer was a multi-million Jim, a year Jim, guy. Jimmer, oh, easily would it? I would have said. You know, you I was at minimum ten. I, yeah. Well, and the thing, the thing is, it's it's like at what point, right? Because when 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 we started seeing the greatness in Jimmer, then you think, okay, this guy's pretty good. And then that next year, it took a lot for you to convince him to come back. You used to be able to have those exit interviews, and you had to convince kids with your words. Now you have to convince kids with money. Yeah in some circumstances, but that year getting him to come back would have taken some serious boosters. Oh, yeah. 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 Serious yeah. I, I think, I help. think, I think um, you probably would have had maybe five to 10 top boosters lining up saying, Hey, whatever we need to, to yeah. bring, he can to be bring my spokesperson. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. He can exactly. be our spokesperson. Oh, so. yeah. 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 And then in merchandising, cause now they can go out and do their own, like he could go create a clothing line now if he wanted to. Yeah. And yeah. he was a national phenomenon. I, yeah, mean, I think he could have yeah. sold a bunch so, of was, wasn't he wasn't wasn't he on commercials? Oh yeah, well, his, they, right? yeah, he did a whole bunch of commercials yeah, yeah, yeah. and they billboards and you without know, getting paid. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. of course, uh-huh. so, of course. And that's yeah. what that's what you're talking about, right, Dave? Where it really wasn't fair before. It wasn't. The, the, what's happening now is fair. We just got to get used to it and figure out how we're going to react to it. Uh, the, the, these kids, they, they they're they're committed to um, you know what they do and how they do it, and they're good at it and. Uh, I'm 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 really happy that they're getting an opportunity to be rewarded for it. Well, I I can't wait for some Jimmer Mania in the Olympics. Oh, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. He, he he's as good a three on three player as because the, the space yeah, on the, out, out there and it's half court and 
You don't have to guard that long. No, nope, you right. have to guard just a very short period of time. <laughs> Shot comes quick. Yeah, no, yeah. 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 no he, he's special. You don't have to waste all that time running from one right. free throw line nope. to the other free throw line. You <laughs> know? Shoot so threes. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a great game. I, 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 we were, Cheryl and I were in Vegas watching my granddaughter. She swims here at, uh, at BYU, and they were having a, a meet at UNLV. But they, they just uh, got invited to the, uh, to the Olympics. Whatever they did, they – they finished high enough to they, where they, they got took a, the silver in the world they, championship. They got, yeah. a, they got an automatic uh, invitation to oh, come nice. and didn't have to go through some more qualifying. So I was so happy for him. So I called him and we, we talked for a while and, and he just told me, he said, this is, when I signed up, I was just didn't really know, but my goodness, this is so fun. He said, mm. I, I, I probably a little more travel than he wanted to be because he, he really is a family guy. But uh, he says that the game itself, the three-on-three -three game, is, uh, is something that he just really, really loves to play. Yeah, and he's made, he is made yeah. for it. So yeah, he is. Sure. Another comment uh, in says, wow, Coach Rose, what a story. Life brings us things we don't expect. Thanks for sharing this. We're so grateful that you guys would come in. We're, we're, uh, we do a thing called Five Questions. And Coach has been on before, so we already did his five questions. So now this is we're a little twist. This is a little twist tonight. We're, we're going to finish with five questions, but I'm going to ask you things about him, and then he's going to tell us if you're right or not. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> So only this, if we, only if we get unfiltered days. Yeah. yeah. So unfiltered days. Well, was we the told best. him the first time. You just whatever comes to your head. First, but, yeah. But so so this is instead of like your favorite sports movie, like in you know how we did with you before. This is we're going to do. We're gonna, you're going to tell us what you think Garrett says, and then he's going to tell us what it actually is. We're going to see how close you guys are. So traveling around together and all that. So All right. All right. So I, by the way, I wouldn't do really well on any of this with him. <laughs> I love my boys, but I don't think I would do very good with these guys. Maybe Gavin, because he he's, lives at our house I, right you know, now. So. I would do really well, because my, my boys, are, they're 12 and 8. So yeah. they're kind of, I, I can't, like, I'm watching movies with them. I'm eating cereal and stuff. That's a them. great yeah, time because they yeah. still really like you. Yeah, and they oh, still yeah, think right. you're oh, great. They still think you know yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then they get, then, you know what though? It comes, this comes back. It comes back. <laughs> yeah. well, the, at some point, when they're married and have kids, they go, Dad, you know what? You were right. That's the payback. Yeah. But it takes years to get to the payback. Right. right? Yeah. So, okay, so here we go. Number one, G Garrett's favorite sports movie. What do you think it is? Favorite sports movie, the, the Notre Dame one with... Uh, oh, Rudy. 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 You got yeah, it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Okay. Nice. Okay. So he's, he's one for one. I, see? It would do good so far. The underdog. So, just the okay. classic yep. underdog. Yeah. That, yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Garrett's favorite singer or band, you know, his favorite music group or, 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 or a solo artist. Whoa. I didn't let him listen to any of the stuff he really liked. <laughs> <laughs> he took my CD out of the car and threw it out of the car. Oh, yeah. <laughs> see? Yeah. So what was that yeah, CD? What CD no, was no, that? Don't, tell, don't tell yet. I don't know. Um... I don't know, but he, the, some dude who swore a lot, okay? <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was Tupac. It was my M&M. It was my oh, M&M. 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 M &M. M &M. M &M. I'll give him a happy you know point for that. When I, he I, said, I, I'm giving him credit for that. Some dude that swore a lot, lot. that's M&M. <laughs> was that your favorite? That counts. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. That counts. Because you only got one shot, just one opportunity. Okay. That's so, it. And he got, so we're giving him two for two on that one, because okay. some guy who swore was on <laughs> yeah, the money yeah, for I'm this. Yeah, I'm with you there. Okay, so Garrett's favorite breakfast cereal. Um, we didn't have a lot of breakfast there. My wife would get up and cook him, you know, a great breakfast every morning. <laughs> Cheryl is the mom. Cheryl is the one. She's been running for mom of the year. I'm going to say my favorite, fro uh, Frosted Flakes. Frosted well, Flakes. We, I've got four boys, and so now we have a lot of sugar cereal. Yes. <laughs> Lots. That is their, it's their go-to. Lucky Charms. Lucky oh, Charms. That's a good one. That's, See? Those are good. I like that. That's pretty. Yeah. So Frosted Flakes, Lucky Charms. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to give him a half a credit because they're both really good sugar sugar. Yeah, so I'm going to give him a half a credit for that one. Um, Garrett's favorite BYU moment. We, we, um, you talked about yours, which was actually a team meeting after yeah. you had come back, which I thought was amazing. What, what, what was Garrett's favorite BYU moment in his experience on the ride with you? I'm going to say the, um, the win at Gonzaga when they were number one in the country and the, the you know papers that all come out with the – 30-0 undefeated season, and I gave it to my team at a pregame meal. I got, co I got <laughs> copies of, of that paper and uh, gave it to all the players, and they talked about it, and we got down 18-2, to two, but we ended up winning the game, and he talks about that all the time. What do you think? I, I do. That's, that is one of my favorite ones, but my absolute favorite – 
has to be the win at San Diego, Jimmermania. San Diego State. Oh. San Diego State. Against Kawhi in the group. Yeah. In the group. So I had decided that I was going to make it to that game, and I had had knee surgery. And, and so I'm hobbling. We're late. We were, our plane was delayed. And so we're coming in the stadium as the game's starting. And I come hobbling down the stairs. I've got a cast on my leg. And all of a sudden, I realize I'm about six seats in is where my seat is. And I can't sit down because my <laughs> leg. I didn't think about this. Yeah. And so I'm standing there, and everyone's telling me to sit down. And so I'm trying to figure out what to do. So my uncle says, just go sit on the end. Well, sitting on the end is Tom Homo. So oh. I had to kick my dad's boss out of his seat <laughs> so that I could sit down and put my legs straight. And I said, I hope they win. they got to win this game. Cause I just, and they did. That, and and they we did. both teams are ranked in the top five, I think, uh, at that, that time. Was, that was unbelievable. That, that whole, those, that, and I called every one of those, by the way, oh. that, that whole year. And I, call, I called that New Mexico game of Jimmers down in, uh, in Thomas and Mack, which was oh, nuts. nuts. What a year. There's so many good moments. So there's so many, I'll there's take so that many things. Game too. There's so many things that you, that you remember, but I... I mean, I can remember that San Diego State game and it being an afternoon game and a CBS game. And um, we, <laughs> we, we start that thing off, and our first possession offensively is awful. We're moving that thing, and we finally throw it to Charles in the corner. He flings it up there. It hits the backboard and banks in. From the corner? From the corner. From the corner. <laughs> from the corner. <laughs> That's how we started the game. And I looked over at my assistant coach, Punch, and I said, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that was a special. So my, my, one of my favorite games ever to call over the years was the game up at Utah when Jimmer had 33 oh. in the first half. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he made the half-court shot at halftime. And it's because Jimmer... Um, I, on the call, sometimes on the Sports Center plays of the day, the top 10 plays of the day, they'll voice it over or they'll just take the call of the game. So I was doing the game for NBC, and, and Jimmer makes that shot, and then it's just quiet, and then I go, look at him. He's just like, like it's no big deal. Like, hey, I'm Jimmer Fredette. That's what I do. I make shots. So they took that whole audio <laughs> of me <laughs> as the number one play of the day on yeah. Sports Center that night. All my friends from New York called, they go, Jimmer Fredette just made you the play of the day. <laughs> Jimmer and I talk about it, and he's like, you've been riding my coattails for years. Yeah, so, we all have. So that, that's, my, all that's have. my favorite. We've all been riding Jimmer's coattails. So I, I, we can't give – no, we're not going to give him credit for that one yeah, because yeah, he said right. San Diego State. Yeah, so, yeah. But he's still – he's two and a half out of four. Those are two good games, though. So I, I'll yeah. take the loss. Yeah, and, no, that's a good one. Yeah. I'll take either of those. Okay, so the last one is, what do you think Garrett's favorite bit of advice that you've ever given him was? That he actually thinks is good. That's it. He thought was good. That he thought was good. And it can even be now. Like, he could have thought it was bad for a while, but he's come around because he's an adult. <laughs> um, I would say that, uh, um, I don't know, I've, I've probably given him more advice than he, he, he w would have liked. But um, when, when he had the problems with his shoulder and realized that he wasn't going to keep his career I, I just I, I gave him advice that what you do with your life you know has very little to do with sports but everything to do with your heart and what you become committed to and what you you know do and he uh he became the uh state champion of uh some cooking contest that he got involved in <laughs> nice. and he went back to minnesota in the national competition and we've been representing utah and so the when I think of whatever I told him, uh, let's we got to move on, and you got to find something that you're passionate about, and uh, let's go. He 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 actually listened to me on that one. Nice, mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, and it it goes it goes back to that moment and that 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 post game speech, as you will, that he gave me <clears throat> after the doctors gave me the bad news, was kind of the first time I remember him telling me, you can't you can't worry about the things you don't have control over. Mm -hmm. And he would give me that advice many times in my lifetime. Um, I, a, a very, very close friend passed away, and I was on a two-year mission, and I, I had a phone call with them when they told me the news, and I was having a really, really difficult time, and he'd said that again then. And then when I was going through um, everything with my shoulder and with the, the uh, dependency, he told me again, you, you can't worry about the things you don't have control over. And it all stemmed back from that that, Matt, that post game speech he gave me in the doctor's office, University of Utah Hospital. Nice. Yeah, that's, you know what? 
I'm giving him a five you out of five. Just, you <laughs> just, just, with that just one. Just with that one. I don't care that he missed one. He missed one, but I'm gonna ignore that he missed one. Yeah, and I'm on. giving I'm giving Dave a five out of five. After official review. Yeah. Um, yeah. After further review yeah. of the show that we, we do in the fall. Yeah. After further review, Dave, Dave goes five for five yeah. on the on the five questions. I think at, for sure. So, you guys, we're we're so grateful that you would come in and spend some time with us because we know t- your time is valuable and we I appreciate the friendship that we've had for all these years. You're doing great things. We're Thank really you. we're really excited for you. Really proud of you. Today is a good day. Is the is the name of the program and. Uh, any any last words you want to leave with us before we let you head out of here? Here's one thing. Today is a good day, but tell me how we were getting your pool ready this morning, and it's snowing up here in Provo. Uh, I, don't, I don't understand. It's not as good a day up here. It is in <laughs> Dallas. St. George. St. George. Do you guys still yeah. have the place out in Paradise? Well, not in Paradise Village. It's uh, out in Kansas. Yeah. 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 You yeah. still so have the place out there. We live, we live there full yeah. time now. And, yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting to look at the little weather app and – See the 32s and 34s and the 62s and 64s. Right. Yeah. And we're only three hours, it's, four hours apart. It's a big yeah, difference. No, if I, I'm getting tired of it, so I may be down to play golf with you before, <laughs> before too it. long. So, mm-hmm. so guys, thanks, thanks for coming on. We feel very blessed that you've come and joined us. And I know that everybody that's out in Cougar Nation around the world is, is glad that you came and well, shared if, your if message you with us. you are somewhere and you, you want to, uh, you know, Kill a couple hours and have us come by. Garrett, Garrett's the guy. He's yeah, Garrett. How, how do we? How do they get a hold? Can we put it in the chat? How, how do we learn? It's yeah. Called, so Rosespeakers.com. It's, it's, yeah. So so we've already Jack's already put it in the in the chat here. So learn more about it. www.rosespeakers.com, and you can they can tap into it and see what you guys have and, and have yep. you come and. We'd and, love to. And we'll help, we'll, help speak, share we'll the story. speak about anything, but I don't know much about. Too much, but I know a little <laughs> no. bit about our time at BYU you and know, our basketball. But uh, you've got some amazing life lessons yeah, to share, absolutely. And, and we appreciate it. So thank you guys. guys. Thanks yeah, so much. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you, Dave Rose and Garrett Rose, his son. Today is a good day. It's just awesome, awesome stuff.